Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, since uh, he gave me the opening, I'm going to follow up right away and say uh, we do have a very, very important ballot issue coming to the voters in February, uh, a major expansion in our facilities to accommodate the 6,000 plus new students that we're expecting in the next uh, six to 10 years. So I, I hope you'll all uh, take note of that and, uh, and support that effort. Uh, I, there's one more introduction that uh, I just I, I can't uh, help but uh, take take an opportunity for. We have the eighth member of the school board here today joining us for lunch. We, uh, uh, after a long absence, we have managed to invite back a student representative who sits on the board and, and participates in our meeting, and that would be Dexter Tang from Roosevelt High School. He's here with his, uh, his colleagues from the Student Senate. We're extremely uh, appreciative of the extra time that they're devoting to uh, giving the students a voice on policy matters before the Seattle School Board. Uh, before I give you uh, an introduction of our, our superintendent, I wanted to give just a very brief uh, background on how we got here. Five years ago, the Seattle School Board launched a major uh, community outreach program to build a strategic plan, a plan that was going to be more data-centered and uh, was going to be a way to inform and give feedback to, oh, thank you. Okay, thanks for that help. <clears throat> to, uh, to bring more uh, database decision-making into Seattle Public Schools. The school reports and the district scorecard that you have before you today is one of the most tangible uh, outcomes of that strategic plan. What we were looking for, as Sarah Morris mentioned, was a system that provided greater accountability, provided a, a means for us to dir direct our limited resources in a strategic fashion so that those schools that needed extra help <coughs> Uh, were going to be very clearly uh, illuminated. So it was not meant to be in any way a negative system, it was, it was meant to be a positive system that would allow us to identify our challenges more clearly and address them with uh, every resource at our disposal. We are not uh, satisfied with the results, but I do want to note that the trend remains positive. We have uh, gone through multiple cycles of budget cuts, and so we're not meeting the targets that we set for ourselves. I personally just want to say that I believe those targets, again, as Sarah pointed out, they are must-do targets. Those are not targets that we should abandon in any way. But given our, our, the, the reality of our resources, we're going to probably have to take more time to reach them. Uh, a year ago when we had this gathering, we had a discussion about potentially examining those targets and, and that has been postponed as we reset our leadership. We will be working on our next five-year strategic plan through the coming year. And that will be one of the places where we refresh and, and uh, revisit the strategies that are going to get us to those targets that are captured in your, in your district scorecard. I would invite all of you, as many of you are key stakeholders and, and representatives of the community, I invite all of you to participate in that strategic plan development process. Uh, we will be working through the calendar, well, it, for us it's the calendar year, the school calendar, not the actual uh, calendar that hangs on the wall. We do everything on the nine, the nine to ten month school calendar, but we will be uh, doing some outreach as we work through this process and, and I really hope that you'll all take the time when the opportunity arises to uh, give us some feedback and, and participate in that process. Our, our superintendent, I'm, I'm no longer going to say our new superintendent because he's been here long enough now to adjust to the rain and to you know feel a little bit more at home, although we were both lamenting that California does have some pretty good weather. Uh, Jose Banda is the son of farm workers from the Central Valley of California. He's a lifelong educator who has, to his great credit, 
has worked at almost every type of position in public education, from classroom teacher to assistant principal to principal to human resources director and so on. He's worked himself up through various school systems to the point where his leadership skills and his, his deep understanding of education was, was really recognized and he thus became a superintendent in Anaheim School District. I am thrilled to be working with Jose. I'm, I'm enjoying uh, the, what I'm learning from him and his insight very much. He's brought a fresh perspective to Seattle. And I hope you'll join me in welcoming here today, Superintendent Jose Banda. this right. Can everybody hear me? Okay, thank you. Uh, welcome and thank you all for being here today. I know that uh, anytime you give up a part of your day and your lunch, it's, uh, it's important. And so you definitely show the support for our school system. I'm pleased here to be presenting uh, my first state of the district. Uh, I've been here just short of four months, but as, as President DeBell said, it's long enough to know uh, what the, the issues are and, and what some of the challenges are here at Seattle Public Schools. Special thank you to Sarah Morris and the Alliance for Education for hosting today's event, and also a thank you to Mayor Mike McGinn uh, for your support and ongoing support for Seattle Public Schools. Also, thank you to Perkins Cooey for providing this beautiful space for us to be able to uh, hold this event. And then again, uh, Board President DeBell, thank you very much for your kind words and uh, wonderful introduction. I'm delighted to be here working closely, collaboratively with school board to serve as a new leader for Seattle Public Schools. Today I'll be sharing information with you about the progress we're making at, in our school district and, and also take the opportunity to talk about the challenges and that's been highlighted in some of the previous uh, comments today. And, but know that what, even though we face these challenges, we remain committed to moving towards providing a world-class education for uh, our students in our community and uh, even though we have shrinking revenues and dollars and therein lies part of that challenge. We are in the fifth and final year of our district strategic plan that established very high goals and a clear focus on the student academics and outcomes. The implementation of the plan was followed by a severe downturn in our economy uh, which resulted in cuts to school funding and unfortunately a loss of uh, really essential operating uh, funds and revenues. While we did not meet all of the expectations outlined in the strategic plan uh, and, and also that we'll be presenting on our district scorecard, we will not back away from our commitment and our mission of making sure that all of our students experience success and receive a high quality education. The strategic plan put us on the right path and although we accomplished many things, including increases in student academic uh, success, much work still remains to be done. Today I will, I will walk you through the district scorecard, school reports, segmentation data, and test scores. It is my hope that you will leave here with a better understanding of where this district is now and where we will be heading. Seattle Public Schools has made significant progress and I look forward to working with our school board, our educators, our family, our community to continue to reach these goals. The mission for Seattle Public Schools is that every student graduates prepared for college, career, and life. Seattle Public Schools is comprised of 95 schools, just over 3,000 teachers, almost 50,000 students. 40% of our students are uh, qualify for free and reduced lunch. 14% of our students receive special education services and support. 13% of our students are enrolled in the APP Spectrum uh, Advanced Placement Programs. 12% are identified as English learners. And, and we have 121 languages or dialects that have been identified in our community. 27% of the general fund budget comes from locally approved levies. So with that, I want to thank our dedicated Seattle voters. Uh, for supporting public education here in Seattle. As you can see from our staffing, teaching and learning is at the heart of everything we do. When you think about what makes a good, a good school district, you think about academic performance, 
graduation rates, fiscal stability, quality facilities, enrollment, family community engagement and support, and employee morale. We are doing well. Overall, our academic achievement is up, as well as our graduation rates. We've implemented financial controls uh, where we are managing public resources by increased board oversight, increased internal controls, strengthened capital department, created an ethics program thanks to uh, a partnership with our, with our city that includes an ethics hotline. And we revised procurement <coughs> procedures on how we do business. We have many aging facilities, but we're working on a long-term facilities plan, and we will ask our public to help us renew the BEX4 capital levy in February so we can continue the good work. Enrollment increased by nearly 1,400 students this year, and if you look at the past three years, that trend is almost 1,000, just over 1,000 students per year increase over the last three years. Our community partnerships with city, arts organizations, and community-based organizations continue to grow and strengthen. There's a lot of involvement from the community. Oop, sorry, I got ahead of myself. There's a lot of involvement from our community with academic and health and wellness assistance. And, and this is a way of looking at the whole child, not just looking at their academic needs, but their social emotional needs as well. And of course, a big help has been provided by our families and education levy, so I thank our mayor, city council, and our city. We are working on employee morale. Employees are the heart of any organization, and nothing could be more true for Seattle Public Schools. There's been a lot of leadership changes over the last few years, including this position that I hold presently. And we currently have a couple of key vacant positions. But we remain committed to building stability throughout our organization to make sure we get the right people sitting on the right seat on the bus. And now I'd like to move on to our annual district scorecard. Each year we measure our results by way of a district scorecard. We have a five-year plan that was set in motion some very ambitious goals for 2013. It was built with high revenue forecasts, but as we heard earlier, the recession set in and deep cuts were experienced by many organizations, but really uh, public education took a brunt of that as well. So while many expectations are baselined in 2008 will not be met, the student academic success has continued to increase. I look forward to working with the staff and our school board to review these targets and start the discussion about refreshing the strategic plan. The graduation rate in 2007 and 8 was 62 percent. The graduation rate for 11 and 12 was 74 percent. There's still work to do, but we're heading in the right direction. Of these graduates, just over 65 percent took a college level course during the high, their high school years, which is up from 51 percent uh, from the class of 2008. These, uh, Excuse me, these college level courses are identified as advanced, pla advanced placement and international baccalaureate. One of the schools with an increasing graduation rate is Cleveland High School. I would like to invite Principal uh, Princess Sharif to speak about Cleveland High School, which is a high growth level three school for a second consecutive year. Principal, please. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank Superintendent Banda and the board for uh, selecting Cleveland to be one of the, the schools that talks about the really good work that's happening in every Seattle public school. So thank you very much. So at, at Cleveland, we, it's been four years um, that we've been working on um, improving student learning. And we've made steady pr progress for the last four years. Um, one of the wonderful things that did happen is that two years ago, we became a STEM high school. Um, the previous year, um, we took for, uh, for planning of um, an inclusive STEM high school. So it's not um, just one or two um, uh, groups of kids that are involved in our STEM program, it's our whole school. And our whole school involves special ed, uh, it involves Eng English language learners, uh, it involves 73% uh, of our kids are free and reduced lunch. And so how do you create a program that's, that's inclusive 
um, that gets results. Uh, and so some of the things that we were allowed to do were we were allowed to create um, um, block scheduling. And block scheduling allows students to um, have eight courses instead of six courses. Therefore, uh, if we have kids included, we're allowed to also, we have the opportunity also to have those kids have support classes. Uh, and so those are some of the things that we were allowed to do and that we were supported to do in our program that help kids move forward. As for my teachers, I asked them to do the most complex teaching job that I've ever had them do before. So imagine a classroom where everybody is included, uh, where you're asked to do team teaching, where you're asked to create projects wrapped around standards. Um, and I'm trying to think of something else that I asked them to do. But I asked them to do some stuff that uh, other teachers weren't supposed to do. And I asked them to do it all in one year. All in one year. You're not supposed to do that. Uh, <laughs> you're not supposed to do that. Um, but then, you know, we, we um, I quoted my, one of the philosophers that I always uh, uh, go back to, and it's Yoda. Uh, <laughs> it's um, the one that he always says is, try, there is no try, there's either do or not do. And so that's what, we, that's our philosophy. That's what we have to do. We take the kids that we have, that they're there in front of us, and um, make every effort to teach every kid that's there. And if you look at, the, there's some of the data that's here, but also some of the data that you look at, look at when you break it out, if you look at OSPI, you'll see that um, all of our groups of kids are moving up. Our 73% of our, 73% uh, of our free and reduced lunch kids are, are making some great progress. And if you look at us compared to the state, we're beating the state in most every one of those categories. We still have an awful lot of work to do. Uh, we're not at 100% for every kid, so obviously we have work to do, but we are pleased with the direction that we're going in. And um, we really appreciate the, that uh, the board is supporting us in sustaining uh, the STEM program at Cleveland High School. So thank you very much. Now let's talk about overall district scorecard highlights. Attendance rate continues to improve throughout the district. 67.2% of our students had fewer than 10 absences during the school year. And we continue to work with the city and community partners to work on incentive programs to continue to increase our attendance rates. Continued improvement on fourth grade math, outperforming the state average with nearly 70% meeting or exceeding the standards. Grade four writing, we saw a slight decrease from last year, so obviously we have some work to do, but uh, we also remain above the state average, um, and so there's a bright spot there, and it's higher than our baseline was in 2007 and 2008. We see continued growth in seventh grade math, 67.4% up from 65.6% uh, last year. And in 2007 and 8, that was 52.6%. We see excellent improvement in eighth grade science, nearly 75% of students scored proficient or above proficient. That's more than an eight percentage points higher than the state average. Broadview Thompson students showed stellar success in science with 71% meeting or exceeding the standard compared to 45% in 2010-11. I would like to invite Principal Wyeth Jesse to speak about the successes at Broadview Thompson K-8. I will talk about segmentation in a few minutes, but want to mention that this school went from a level two to a level three this year. Principal Jesse, please. Thank you, Superintendent Bonda. Good afternoon. I feel very fortunate uh, today to share the success of Robbie Thompson and just how far we have come. It was only six years ago that Robbie Thompson was an elementary school of 480 students with 40% of the population qualifying for free and reduced lunch. Today, Robbie Thompson is a pre-K 
through eighth grade school of 700 students with 63% of the population qualifying for free and reduced lunch. Along the way, there was a lot of challenges uh, as we grew the educational program. One of those, for example, was that only 64% of our intermediate grade students at Broadview met standard in reading on the MSP. That simply was not acceptable to the staff at Robbie Thompson. And we knew that we needed to do something to change that. So one of our strategies was to completely redevelop our reading program. After all, reading is the gateway skill to the other core content areas. Then uh, we moved forward and worked hard, uh, as you can see, to increase the scores across many content areas as the graph demonstrates. And I do firmly believe that by boosting students' reading skills, we are able to do so across the content areas. Moving forward, we're gonna to continue to have a laser-like focus on the standards uh, through planning, instruction, and assessment, because we are working tirelessly to close the achievement gap. Thank you. Thank you, Wyeth. I need, to, I need to learn to stop following him. He always does that to me. <laughs> Today, the school district releases our individual school reports. This is the third year of the individual school reports and that take into account academic performance, growth, and climate, which is how our families, our staff, our students feel about their school. The school reports will also be available online today and in school offices. Segmentation uh, group schools by performance. It provides information to, public, uh, uh, to the public and to our families. It allows us to target supports to level one and level two schools. And it offers more autonomy to those uh, higher achieving schools that are making the greatest gains. Elementary, K-8, and middle schools are identified primarily through student achievement, test scores, and attendance. And the high schools are grouped on a wider range of outcomes, including student achievement, attendance, graduation rates, and then metrics for college and career readiness. Our schools are improving, and this is exciting. The number of level one schools has declined from 20% to 7% since 2008 and 9. The proportion of level one and two schools combined has declined from 41% to 15% since 2008-9. The proportion of level five schools has grown from 15% to 27% in 2008 and 9. And lastly, 16 schools increased by at least one level this school year, this past school year. We are proud of our principals our teachers, our staff, our students, our families, and our community partners for their contributions towards this success. Now I would like to invite Principal Greg Immel to share a story about the success at Bailey Gassard Elementary. Bailey Gassard moved from a level one to a level three school uh, this year, thanks to the hard work of staff, school community, and their strong partnerships. With that, I'd like to have Greg Emil, principal, come on up. Thank you. Uh, th thanks to the Alliance for uh, inviting me to uh, speak for the next 60 minutes and let you know how my educational philosophy has developed over the last 57 years. I very much appreciate that. Oh, oh that's right, it was 60 seconds. Okay, so here I go. Um, thanks for evoking the uh, spirit of Superintendent Stanford. I had the opportunity to work with him and he is truly an inspiration uh, to this day um, as, a, as a school leader. Um, I remember he used to say that uh, in elementary schools we have the big secret um, because we get all the hugs from the kids and, um, uh, and I think he has something there. 
Um, this morning, when I, uh, I'm at a point in my career when I wore a coat and tie that the five-year-olds um, bust out laughing, they think that's pretty funny, and uh, <laughs> one of the students actually looked at me and says, Mr. Immel, why the office close? <laughs> Uh, it also makes the staff suspect because uh, they think you're out interviewing for other jobs. <laughs> um, but uh, I was a special education teacher for 16 years and have been an administrator for the last 16 and I've always been impressed with my colleagues. Um, I'm currently so fortunate to work with a group of amazing educators who have the common core values of justice, compassion, integrity, family, and faith. These teachers and I chose to be in a high poverty school with students of color because we believe, supported by our value of social justice, that these are the students who have not traditionally succeeded and have the least amount of opportunity and that if we can make it happen here, it can happen anywhere. We're very proud that after all of our focus on professional development with an integrity and rigorous implementation of literacy best practices, that the strategies we learned from Teachers College at Columbia University and Readers and Writers Workshop and the early learning professional development, that the data is affirming the teacher's hard work and collaboration, because without them, this would not happen. I would also like to thank our partners that understand the power of collective impact that we have working together for the benefit of the children and the families in our school community. Special thanks to Seattle University, inspired by Jeffrey Canada's Harlem Children's Zone place-based strategy initiated the Seattle University Youth Initiative and has offered Gatzert a pipeline of volunteer university students during the school day to support students and teachers. As exciting is that with the support and endorsement of the Seattle School Board, Seattle U has become our intensive lead partner, coordinating many of our other partners to develop an extraordinary two-hour after school program from three o'clock to five o'clock of extended learning, programming, and academic and enrichment for nearly 50% of our students. Lastly, I'd like to thank all of our partners, including America Scores, the Soccer Literacy Program, Seattle Music Partners, Team Read, The Rotary, Big Brothers Big Sisters, The Mountaineers Club, Inner City Outings, Washington Research Institute, Target, Heart of America Foundation, the City of Seattle, YMCA, and the Alliance for Education. On behalf of Gatchard students, families, and staff, thanks so much for the recognition of the student growth at our school. I'd like to thank the three principals, the three schools, congratulations, and again, just three examples of the, the wonderful work that's going on across the district and all the dedicated staff working hard to make that happen for our students. So despite all of our successes, we face challenges in the upcoming years. While we've had some success, we still have an achievement gap, and we heard our mayor re uh, refer to that and to our uh, board president as well. This is unacceptable, and we know we can do better. In math, 82% of white students are proficient on the state testing, state test. 77% of Asian Pacific Islanders are proficient, and then it drops significantly. 50% of Hispanic Latino students are proficient. 38% of African American students are proficient or above. 38% of Native American students are proficient. So what are we doing to address this the achievement gap? We're very focused on instructional programs and of course making sure that we have effective teachers in every single classroom across the district. We're preparing for the common core standards national standards, first time ever. And we're working to make sure that our staff is not only trained properly to implement those, but also gonna to work towards making sure they have all of the materials and support they need to make that happen. We also have the multi-tiered systems of support, which is really the intervention programs and making sure that we provide that in a very focused approach, making sure that we address specific uh, issues that students may have in terms of what may be impeding their learning. We want to make sure that we ensure equity, opportunity, and access to every one of our students. So looking ahead, the achievement gap, as I mentioned, is unacceptable. We can do better. We're looking at early childhood education or early learning as really one of the areas we want to focus on. 
getting them off to a good start, making sure that they don't start behind in kindergarten. We're in year three of a collective bargain agreement that expanded teacher evaluations, and we couldn't have done that without working in a collaborative fashion with some of our uh, employee groups and, and our stakeholders. Again, with that focus on making sure that we have highly effective teachers in every single classroom. Common core standards. I mentioned that a little bit earlier, to provide consistent, clear understanding of what students are expected to learn. In the Common Core Standards, the students will be provided with instruction that is relevant to real world, and they'll be provided with tools to ensure the same access to a high quality education. We must increase equity, access, and opportunity for all our students, whether we're talking about facilities, instruction, or teachers. We will work hard to, do, uh, to make sure that we address the issues with special education. We're getting ready to do a national search for an executive director, and we need to think about how we want to restructure and rethink our special education department to better meet the needs of our students across the district. I'm looking forward to working with our board in the upcoming months in order to update and refresh our strategic plan. The growth in Seattle Public Schools is at a greater pace than anticipated, which is now putting a strain on our capacity and facilities. We're going, to be, we're going to request for a capital levy renewal, an operations levy renewal, uh, that which will go to voters in February of 2013. We're currently looking at a projected budget shortfall of $15 million in the upcoming school year. I've been here for a little bit over four months now, and I'm reviewing the current organizational structure and will adjust according to make sure that we have the types of systems and support to support with the learning that's going on at the school sites and make sure that we have that equity access and opportunity for all our students. Relationships are key. We must continue to work collectively and integrally with our families, with our students, our labor partners, our legislators, and our community in order to improve and support public education in Seattle. Speaking of our community, while Seattle Public Schools is looking ahead to meet our goals, we know that collectively we can work together to improve student success. Seattle is an amazing city filled with opportunities. Our students are the future. They are the ones who will lead this city and compete globally in 21st century. Your role, you can help Seattle schools, Seattle Public Schools ensure that every student is on a pathway to success and be ready for college career and beyond. And you can do this by partnering with our schools. You can become involved with PTSA. We have quite a large uh, PTSA group, uh, uh, the parent uh, support group. You can serve on school advisory committees, which I did as a parent when my children were in public school. You can uh, volunteer. We welcome people to volunteer to work with our students in the classroom or during uh, extracurricular activities, and we encourage you to become mentors. Help us to identify creative solutions to this budget crisis that we're pre presently in. And I also encourage our uh, people in attendance today to make sure that you register and you vote this month and, in, and also in February for those important measures that support public education. Join us in celebrating our successes. Thank you again for joining us for the State of the District. We're proud of the work that we've done up to this point, but as I've stated, we know that we still have work that lies ahead for us. I want to thank our school board for their dedication and commitment to the children of Seattle. I'm looking forward to the future and the work that lies ahead. Relationships, maintaining strong partnerships are essential for our success, and we remain committed to that. We will continue to champion equity, access, and opportunity for all of our students. We will continue to build strong relationships with family and community. We will continue to make decisions on what is best for students. We will continue to increase rigor and in instruction and be innovative about closing the achievement gap in the upcoming years. We will work to ensure that students graduate from Seattle Public Schools ready for college career, and life. Again, Seattle's an amazing city with amazing opportunities. 
Let's continue to work together to prepare our students to be the next executives or CEOs or initiate the next startup company in the Pacific Northwest. With that, we remain committed to preparing students to thrive in a 21st century environment. Preparing students to compete in a global economy. Providing access to technology. Committed to providing and, uh, excuse me, embracing the diversity of this community and district and view that diversity as an asset and as a strength of this city. We remain committed to believing in our students. We need to be able to believe that any one of us, any student coming through our doors at any given time has the opportunity to be the next valedictorian at their high school graduation. We need to create a model urban school system that meets the needs of all of our students. And through that, we develop opportunities for a bright future for every single student. Let's not forget why we're all here in this room today, and that is for our students, for they truly are the future of this city and our state. Thank you.